Hey guys, JV here with another episode of Journey to Andromeda. This time we're discussing which alien races will appear in the next Mass Effect, which has been a hot topic since Andromeda was revealed. In this video, we'll cover the returning alien races, what their presence will be in Andromeda, and look at the new races that we'll see in the Helios Cluster. Before we start, quick reminder that I'm uploading plenty of Andromeda content before and after launch, including tips and tricks guides, playthroughs, and multiplayer gameplay. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure and subscribe. Let's begin with our returning races, and real quick side note before we get into that, every single species in Andromeda will have a male and female counterpart. That is what Bioware has confirmed about Andromeda, except for the Asari, obviously, because there aren't any traditional male Asari in the way that we recognize male. But this was something that was missing in some of the original trilogy games. That will not be the case with Andromeda, so definitely expect that. So the four primary returning races are the Council races. So that's gonna be the Turians, the Salarians, the Asari, and of course the humans. And these races are the primary ones that are involved with the Andromeda Initiative, the whole reason that we're going to Andromeda. And as we know, the Initiative has launched four arcs and the Nexus, the main ship, to Andromeda. So each of these four arcs is designated for that particular race. So there's a Turian arc, a Salarian arc, an Asari arc, and the human arc, Arc Hyperion. However, just because an arc is designated for that race primarily doesn't mean that they don't have a variety of aliens aboard, because they do. We know that Arc Hyperion has, for example, Lexi, who is the Asari doctor aboard that particular arc. And also, the Nexus, the main ship, is the most diverse of any of these ships. It's going to have a variety of different aliens aboard. We didn't list the Krogan because they are not one of the council races, but there's absolutely a Krogan presence. We've seen Krogan in a lot of gameplay. We have a Krogan squad mate, obviously, but the Krogan don't have their own arc. So I imagine that the Krogan are going to be spread across a few arcs, but primarily on the Nexus, if I had to guess. Side note about these primary races, we know that the arcs arrive in Andromeda at different times, and I don't believe that was planned, but that is just how things went down. So the variety of races will have already been in Andromeda for a particular amount of time. Again, we don't know for sure, but just know that there will be a variety of races already in the Andromeda galaxy in some form or fashion because of that little plot point there. Those are the primary races returning, but we also know from the Golden Worlds Andromeda Initiative briefing video that Habitat 5 is perfect for supporting Turian and Quarian life. And again, that was an Andromeda Initiative briefing, so clearly the Initiative is aware of Quarians and takes that into account, so my assumption from hearing that is that some Quarians must have traveled in the Andromeda Initiative on some of the arcs, the Nexus, we're not sure, but there must be some kind of Quarian presence. Now, we don't know if we'll actually get to see or meet any Quarians if something happened that went wrong with the Quarians traveling over, we're not sure, but Quarians definitely are involved in the Initiative somehow, or else I don't think they would have mentioned that. We have literally not seen a Corian in any Andromeda gameplay, and you know, we've seen a decent amount of Andromeda gameplay, not too much considering the scale and how big the game is from what we've heard from developers and previews and all that stuff, but it is curious that we haven't seen any Corians, so really interested to see what their presence is going to be like in this game. There are two races that Bioware has confirmed are not in Andromeda, that's the Geth, so fans of Legion and the Geth, I'm sorry they won't be in Andromeda, and also the Reapers, and I think that one should be be pretty obvious because the Reapers are focused on the Milky Way galaxy. I know a lot of time has passed, but I think moreover the reason for that is they want to focus on another enemy. They don't want to harp on the Reapers, they don't want to focus on that, they want to open a new chapter in this series. If you're wondering about secondary and tertiary races like Vorcha, Batarian, Hanar, Elcor, Volus, for example, I don't think Bioware has neither confirmed or denied any of those races being in Andromeda, but just think about the technical part of that. If they were to have a little bit of Volus or a little bit of Batarians, they would have to go through and animate and make new models for all that stuff. I'm not saying that's too difficult, but just think about that. And, you know, the possibilities I think are kind of slim to see a lot of those races. Maybe we'll see a few of those, but I don't expect all of them to show up in the game. Moving on to new races, ones we've never seen before that are showing up in this game. We don't know if their origin is in the Andromedan Galaxy necessarily for sure or not, but nonetheless they're going to appear in this game. We have the Ket, who are the main enemy of Andromeda, and we've seen a decent amount of the Ket in gameplay over the last few months. They wear some kind of bone armor, and they really do remind us of the collectors of Mass Effect 2. That's what they look like to me. However, the main difference between the two is you actually see the face of the Ket, so they're not this kind of bug 
bug like creature they do have faces and they do you know actually talk to you so the cat are described as dangerous unpredictable and technologically advanced and they believe that the humans are intruders in their galaxy we don't know about how they feel about other milky way races because hey we're all coming here it's not just the humans but they definitely see the humans as a threat through some of the hands-on time through other media outlets, we also know that the Ket are militaristic, angry, destructive, and again, mostly hostile to humans. So the Ket are really, you know, not fans of the humans for some particular reason. We'll have to figure out what that is, why that reason is when we play the game. As far as we can tell, there is a Ket leader, a main antagonist, and his name is Archon. He was revealed in one of the cinematic trailers, the second one, I believe, and that's about it. That's all we know about the Archon. We do know that we kind of run into him accidentally he kind of takes over our main screen and talks to writer whichever writer you choose the protagonist so the archon is the main villain and he definitely gives me Saren vibes which is nice because that harkens back to the original game and of course we know that bioware tried to you know draw inspiration from the original mass effect for this game so archon looks interesting he does some cool kind of levitation stuff and he's very spooky Personally, I'd like to see a friendly cat at some point, and I don't want them to be typecasted kind of like the collectors were. I know the collectors were technically, you know, controlled by the Reapers and whatnot, but I want the cat to have a little more diversity in that sense. I don't want them to just be the absolute enemy because that's what they are and that's what they decided. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. We've had, you know, absolute enemies in past games, but I don't know. I'd like to see a friendly face among the cat at some point. Next, we have the Angara, who appeared in a cinematic trailer. They were also in some Kadara gameplay at one of the friendly kind of outpost locations. But yes, the Angara are a new race in Andromeda. And at some point, we also land in Angara territory. That's where we meet Jal, who is one of our squad mates. Unfortunately, we don't know anything about Jal. We'll get to that in a second. But the only other kind of concrete thing we know about the Angara is that they live in large, close-knit, familial groups with spirituality being passed on by parents to their offspring that's a really specific thing but i found that on a rock paper shotgun article about a preview for the game so we know there's some kind of spirituality going on with the angara that's about it and back to jaw we know that jaw is an outsider trying to find footing among people with unfamiliar cultures so that sounds like he's trying to work with you know the andromeda initiative the new milky way races who just arrived in the helios cluster and we know he's a resistance fighter because that's the archetype kind of class that the game gives him in the squad selection screen that we've seen also, we can connect that to one of the planets where it says meet the resistance on Aya, I want to say, one of those planets there. And so I think you can connect the dots on there unless there's multiple resistances. Jaw is part of some kind of resistance movement. We don't know if it's within the Angara resisting from another sect of their own species or from, you know, the Ket or some other species that's trying to harness control over the Helios Cluster. The final tidbit we know about Jaw is that romance might be difficult with him if it's even possible. From some of the previews I've read, Red. Apparently, Jaw is difficult to romance, and there weren't even any options for that. However, that could have been just a small slice of the game, and it could be, you know, possible later on if that's your thing, if you're trying to romance Jaw. But overall, I'll say that Bioware has been tight lipped about the Angara, and I'm kind of happy about that because I want to figure out for myself what the Angara are about. The final new race that we know of in Andromeda so far is the Remnant, and they are a non sentient race, so they don't have giant civilizations or anything like that. But there's a a lot of mystery surrounding them. We won't be talking to them as far as we know. However, there could be a talking remnant and that might be a big plot point later on down the line. But the general gist of it is that they are just kind of this silent, mysterious, synthetic machine based race that kind of hovers around and does their own thing. Kind of like the keepers. That's what that reminds me of. But you don't fight any keepers in the original trilogy. But yeah, there are several different types that we come across and we know that they guard alien artifacts on Elodin, which was featured in the exploration gameplay thing that Bioware has been doing before launch. So they're guarding some kind of artifacts. We don't know why. We do have an entire weapon type based on the Remnant called Remnant Weapons, and they're beam based. They don't have any ammo. I think it's high rate of fire and high accuracy. So at some point, it seems like we decide to, you know, yank the weapons off of the Remnant that they've been shooting us with, or we find a way to utilize their technology and craft these weapons. But there are certainly Remnant based weapons that we, the Pathfinder, can use in Andromeda. Furthermore, we've seen a lot of different gameplay 
of this, there is some kind of vault based system that has to do with the remnant. We don't know their direct connection, but we do know with PB and her loyalty mission, that gameplay on IGN, and also one of the earliest 4K trailers involves the remnant and going into one of these vaults. And we know that they turn hostile when you get too close. There's a bunch of vaults on other worlds in the Helios cluster. There's a vast network of ancient vaults and accessing them is a challenge. There's some puzzles and mysteries we're going to have to decode and figure out what's really going on. We're going to have to rely on all of our skills to get all of the vaults back online for whatever reason. Those are actually, you know, dialogue lines that have been uttered in some of these trailers. And apparently resolving the mystery of these vaults may hold the key to survival in Andromeda. So it does seem like on a higher level, the remnant are going to be really important. And this really reminds me of the mysteriousness of the Reapers in the original game, Mass Effect 1. If you guys remember, at first the stakes were very small. It was all about getting Saren, this rogue specter who's going around rounding up Geth and just being this evil guy. However, things really expand when you talk to Sovereign on Vermeer and realize, holy shit, this is way bigger than just a rogue specter who's rounding up troops for whatever reason. It's all about the Reapers. So I really do hope that the Remnant play that kind of role in the story at a higher level. Anyways, guys, that is all we know about races in Andromeda so far. Of course, this is information that we know right now on March 9th. More may be revealed in the next few days, and we're going to have our hands on early access in just seven days. It's, it's a week away. I am so unbelievably excited. So let me know in the comment section below what other races do you want to see return in Andromeda in some form or fashion? One of those secondary tertiary races. Do you want to see a Volus? Because I'd love to see a Volus, you know, kind of rolling around in the sand on one of these deserty planets. So let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button. I'd appreciate it. And also don't forget to subscribe for more Andromeda content coming very soon. Again, there's going to be some kind of multiplayer reveal at PAX East very soon. So I will absolutely be covering that on the channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.